You're listening to the really useful podcast. It's the tech podcast for technophobes. My name is Christian Colley from MakeUseOf.com and with me this week is James Frew. James, how are you? Yeah, greetings, Christian. Are you all good? Getting ready for Christmas? It is. It, it is December tomorrow. It's still November as we record this. You'll be listening to this in December, though, um, listeners. And uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm kind of. Do you know what? I'm. This must be an effect of the uh, the 2020. I'm actually looking forward to Christmas. <laughs> I hate Christmas. You. <laughs> I want to say hate is a strong word. I don't mind Christmas. I like the day and I like all the stuff. It's just all the build up that I'm not that keen on. But I feel like kind of submerging myself in the build up this year. Yeah. Is that, I'm actually looking forward to hearing some Christmas music and things. Yeah. Although um, I noticed that this great Ormond Street Hospital is doing a fundraiser. So if you when you hear Last Christmas by Wham, mm. you have to donate to them. Yeah. Um, no, I'm I'm in two minds whether to try really hard not to donate to them or to just go and put it on and then donate to them. What, what are you supposed to do in that situation? Yeah, because they've, they've uh, taken on the, I think it was called Whamageddon or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been yeah. like an online challenge the past few years where you try and avoid hearing that song before Christmas. That's it, yeah. So they've taken it, but done it the reverse. So if you're playing Whamageddon, you can't donate to Great Ormond Street. But if you donate to Great Ormond Street, you've lost Whamageddon. Yeah confusing what do you do uh, um i mean one thing to do is not listen to the radio um yeah. maybe cheating i don't know we have smooth radio on in the car quite often and um it's it's guaranteed playlist fodder that so yeah i've, I've more or less lost already because single christmas popper is popped <laughs> anyway we're talking about music already and we, we, we've got an audio theme to this week's your really useful podcast isn't that right indeed I'm I'm a bit useless when it comes to buying audio, but you know a bit more about it than I do. Uh, yeah, so the past few years, I've written a lot of guides, done a lot of reviews. Um, music is also a big part of my day-to-day -day life. I enjoy it a lot. So even before I started writing about tech, it was high up my list of priorities in any case. The first thing to note is that there are broadly three types of headphones. Okay. So there's wired headphones, and you have to have them plugged into a into the device you want to listen to. And that has become increasingly difficult as smartphones have ditched uh, the 3.5 millimeter jack. So Apple have made it so that you can buy lightning adapters to put in. But generally speaking, they're better suited for PCs because generally PCs do still have the 3.5 millimeter jack. Okay. Then there's wireless headphones. And pretty much these are Bluetooth based. So they'll connect to pretty much any Bluetooth device that you have. So that could be your games console. It could be your smartphone, your computer, TV, even. Um, they are generally what people think of now when they refer to headphones. And they are very convenient because no wires means you, do, you can connect to multiple devices at the same time. But the biggest drawback is battery because unlike wired headphones, they do require battery. So it means another device to top up. Um, and there is a third type that's kind of still wireless but they're called true wireless headphones and these are ones that apple helps popularize with their airpods they're tiny little earbuds that you can place into your ear and they are not connected to each other physically so you can have one earbud in and then you place the other earbud in there's no wires at all and they usually come in a charging case mm -hmm. that uh, you can place them back into and top up the battery so that's the first place to start really is deciding what type of headphone is right for what you want it for for most people most of the time, wireless headphones or true wireless headphones are going to be the ones they want to go for. They're the most compatible. They work with the most amount of devices because of the Bluetooth compatibility. And they are very convenient because you can connect them to multiple devices, interact with the digital assistants, take calls and all that sort of stuff. The set that I'm wearing is the Jabra Elite 85H. And there's a button specifically for interacting with the digital with your digital assistant. So some of them will come with a button to interact with your phone, and that's what these ones do. Mm -hmm. So if you've got an iPhone, it'll interact with Siri. If you've got an Android phone, it'll probably do Google Assistant. But then there are some types. Um, Amazon's Alexa is incredibly popular for incorporating into devices. Mm -hmm. So you'll see it on speakers, on all sorts of stuff. And some headphones come with Alexa built in. So it still requires a connection to your phone, but Alexa is actually in the headphones itself right. rather than requiring the phone itself. 
yeah. not every skill will work with the version of Alexa that's built into certain products. So to get the full range of skills, you need to have an Amazon product. Oh. So like the Echo or the Dot. Um, so sometimes they'll be feature limited if you find it on a speaker. Maybe it won't interact with some of your smart home devices. Maybe it won't accept certain commands. It sort of depends. And it depends on how each company has implemented Alexa. So before, you, if that's something that's important to you, definitely check the product first because mm -hmm. Alexa built in is a good thing, but you need to make sure that it does exactly what you need it to do before you shell out the money. Okay. So if I, I've got myself a head, set of headphones, or I've, I've got my eye on a set of headphones, do I need to be considering whether this set of headphones is um, ideal for a particular task? such as gaming or music or watching movies or are they universally good? Um, it sort of depends on how much you're going to do each of those tasks. You know, if you want them predominantly for gaming, there are important things to consider, like Bluetooth is wireless. So there's always going to be some level of latency or delay in terms of what's happening. So if you're relying on the Bluetooth connection to give you a full immersive sound of what's happening in the game, you need to make split second decisions and the latency might affect that. So you may be too late to notice that there's someone behind you and you lose. So the best set for gamers is generally a wired set. But that's not always the case. But generally, if you're going to be gaming a lot and online multiplayers are a big part of what you do, you'll probably want to go for a wired set, just like you would a wired keyboard or a wired mouse if you're gaming on the desktop as well. But generally speaking, if you just want to be able to use them for a wide range of tasks, then you should consider how convenient and how comfortable they are. Um, aside from anything else, if you don't buy a set that is comfortable for you to wear, then you just won't wear them. You know, if you put them on for half an hour and they're uncomfortable, they're giving you a headache, they push in at your ears, they don't fit over your head or whatever it is, you just won't use them. And then that's the investment lost. So the most important thing I think for universally is to make sure that they're comfortable and that you think that you're quite likely to use them regularly. You know, if they're big and you need them for portability, then you're probably not going to use them either. Okay. In which case, you might want to go for a true wireless headphones instead because they're usually in tiny little carrying cases. The very first set of headphones I got were, I don't know, late 80s. And uh, the sort of, uh, there was a typical Walkman type headphones. So they had like the metal frame mm. and then the plastic sliding up and down and then rather large speakers with the comfort, in inverted quotes, from Max, um, of some orange foam, which really, mm. really did nothing for the comfort, frankly. It <laughs> might have slightly dissipated the, the audio away from your ears slightly to make it less tinny. They were so uncomfortable. It was incredible how bad they were. That's something that's changed in recent years, that if you get over-the-head headphones, over-ear headphones, they are generally have big cushioning around the ears. Yeah, They have... A large internal area where your ear can sit so it's not like it's sitting on your ear it's usually sitting around your ear yeah. um, and that's also beneficial for noise cancellation so the there are two types of noise cancellations passive which means basically creating a barrier to stop thing, noises coming in and active active uses technology to emit sound frequencies to cancel out the noise so that obviously requires battery. So passive is more about the design of the headphones. And then active is a feature that requires power. And the over-ear designs usually incorporate some element of passive noise cancellation. So because they sit over your ear, they form a barrier. It means that you're less likely to be disturbed by the noises around you as well. I've fallen asleep wearing headphones in the past. And I can tell you that those old sort of 80s ones really hurt the ears. Mm. whereas something not particularly this pair because i've never fallen asleep wearing this pair that i'm wearing now the sennheisers but a, a, a more modern over the ear overhead and covering the ear that they're, they're, they're more comfortable to fall asleep in should people be falling asleep wearing headphones though there's no damage in doing it but it may not be the most comfortable sleep you're going to get sure generally speaking the best ones to use would be over the ear headphones because they're less intrusive in your ear canal. You know, if you're wearing some earbuds that poke into your ear mm. and then if you put pressure on them, it may push into your eardrum further than would be comfortable. Yeah. 
it's unlikely to be dangerous. You know, don't start panicking if you fall asleep with earbuds in, but it's not likely to be very comfortable. If you're looking for something that you can fall asleep in or can fall asleep while wearing, over the ear headphones are generally the best. Um, and a lot of them also come with like a sleep feature. So they'll auto power off after a certain period of time. So yeah. if you fall asleep, it's not like they're on using battery all night. They'll turn off after half an hour, an hour or something like that. Do they know you're asleep? Is there some sort of accelerometer gyro thing going on? or? Generally speaking, not. Uh, it's just an auto off feature. If it's not playing music or, you know, if the if you're listening to a podcast to fall asleep or you, you use meditation apps or something like that, um, then once the audio stops, it'll power off after okay. a period of time. Okay. That's useful. That's useful. So uh, you are using a headset at the moment. I can't tell whether that is like a specialist sort of one with a microphone built in or anything because I've got light shining on my computer and I can't really see it. <laughs> um, but I mean, the, the ones you're using now, are they? would you recommend them? Are they your favorite? Do you have another pair that you prefer? What, what's your favorite type of headset? So I have two that I use regularly. Um, the ones I'm wearing now, like I said, are the Jabra Elite 85H. And um, I was actually fortunate enough to try these before they were released when we visited CES in 2019. So when we were in Vegas at the Consumer Electronics Show. And to be honest, they slightly, um, they knew how to hit my buttons just right with their demo. So they put us in this booth to show the noise cancellation effects. And they played um, noise from one of the stations in London that I went to every day on my commute. So it was like, it was like a nice, I was very far away from home, but it was a nice like, oh, that's, that's where I live. Oh. Yeah. So I got to listen to the noise cancellation effects and it was so powerful and they were very comfortable. Um, so I reviewed them not long after and they're hands down my favorite set of headphones I've ever used. They're so comfortable. Battery life is excellent. The noise cancellation is excellent. There's nothing I don't like about them. Um, and I've been recommending them to people. So we have for our work, we use Slack to communicate internally. And someone asked a question the other day about headphones. I recommended them, showed them my review and they've gone ahead and bought them and liked them. Wow. So. I would hands down recommend these to anyone. The only downside, the only downside is that they are quite pricey. Usually they retail for somewhere between $200 and $250. So it's not cheap. No. However, compared to other premium headsets, so say something like the AirPods, Apple's AirPods, or Beats headphones, they are typically around the same price. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they're hugely out of whack, but obviously it is it's still an expensive set of headphones. Um, if you're looking for something cheaper, though, I use, so I use these for work for when I'm sitting at the computer. But if I'm wandering around and I need something quick and light, I do use a set of true wireless headphones as well. So I use the House of Marley Liberate Air, and their House of Marley is sort of loosely affiliated with you know, Bob Marley's estate, and tries to do things that would align with his character. So it focuses on sustainability. So the headphones, the outer shell is not made of plastic, it's made of bamboo, and they use recycled plastic where they can in the headphones. So that's one upside to it. Although that's only a small component of why I like them. The headphones themselves are just very comfortable. They last a very long time. They connect easily. You can use one without the other. They sit in my ear quite nicely. They've never fallen out before, obviously, 2020 and the lockdowns and things. I'd use them for the gym. And they were perfect, you know, never fell out no matter what I was doing. Cool. I've, and the battery life on them is excellent. I will use them for about a week without needing to charge them. So That's good. I can't hear the word bamboo without thinking about Dick Van Dyke. Uh, one for all the listeners there. <laughs> yeah. Um, is, yeah. Is there any danger in using noise cancellation headphones when you're out and about? Um, so it sort of depends on how effective it is. For instance, the ones I'm wearing now, the noise cancellation is totally effective i cannot hear anything around me but one of the reasons i love these headphones is that they have different noise cancellation modes so noise cancellation headphones work by having microphones on the outside of the headphones so they're constantly listening for the noises around you and using those microphones they can then apply noise cancellation but they can also play the noise into your ear slightly too so if they chose to they can reverse it slightly so you can hear what's going on around you and these ones have a feature called hear through which is a feature that quietens some of the noise cancellation so you can hear what's going on around you right. so not every noise so you know if you're in a bustling area you won't hear all of it 
but you'll hear enough and it's able to it uses artificial intelligence to pull out the important noises so say if there's a car coming up behind you or you know you're about to cross a road or there's a train or you know those kind of like short but obviously loud and important noises that you should be able to hear it's able to characterize those and allow you to hear them and other that's not unique to these headphones the performance of them i feel is unique but uh it's a feature that's found on a lot of noise cancellation headphones again it's a premium feature so if you chose sort of a mid-range set of noise cancelling headphones it may not come with it sure. so if, if it's something that you feel is important to you so like if you know you're going to wear them when you're out a lot then probably consider whether you should get a set that has that feature um, but if you're just planning to use them at the computer and you don't really feel like that's something that's essential for you then you can probably reduce the set the price of the set that you're looking at by not opting for that feature okay what about the other end of the scale what if i was looking for a budget set of headphones a budget headset um but they have to be over the ear rather than in-ear and wireless so there's plenty still available i mean bigger brands that you'll have heard of like notable ones like sennheiser sony um beats you know all of the big names you would think that they only do premium options um, but that's not the case at all they all have a huge range and so what you'll find is there is always a trade-off there's always something that makes it cheaper but generally speaking you can find noise cancelling comfortable headphones for a mid-range or even low price and that's especially true if you're looking outside of the main brand so if you choose something like anchor or tautronics they're chinese brands that have had affordability always at the center of what they do but without you know compromising on the quality so you can get a good set of noise cancelling headphones from anchor for less than a hundred dollars easily and they'll be pretty high performance you probably won't notice really that there's a huge difference between them certainly not for the price difference in terms of um, music for instance because as you said earlier on you listen to a lot of music What's the best option? Is it is it a nice big set of earphones like the ones you're wearing now, or in ear earphones, or is 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 there any particular type of earphone that is more or headset or headphone that is more suited to listening to music at its best? Yeah, if you're looking for a sort of audiophile style quality, you'll want an over the head set of headphones, and that's generally because the audio reproduction is done by things called drivers. And in earbuds, there's only a limited amount of space to fit those in. And it's a physical mechanism that needs to happen. So the bigger the space around your ears, or the bigger the, you know, the headphone is, the more space they've got to put higher quality drivers in. And it's the same with speakers. You know, If you go for a small speaker, it's generally a bit tinnier than the bigger speakers you get are you know, more powerful, higher quality. And it's the same, same um, approach here. So you are looking for over the ear headphones and there are some that are designed for sort of studio quality um things like audio technica have a very good name for studio quality headphones but the important thing to always keep in mind is it's very much dependent on the quality of audio that you put into them as to whether you'll get good quality audio out so for instance unless you subscribe to spotify premium um the audio quality is reduced so anything you stream is compressed so you'll never be able to hear all of the noises that your headphones might be able to reproduce so if you want premium audio quality from your headphones you'll need a premium audio quality source so if you're streaming that might be something like tidal uh, or spotify premium which then streams at 320 kilobits per second which is generally sort of about cd quality um, or otherwise you need high res uh, audio files to play in order to hear some of that sound i mean you can have a good set of headphones and they will sound good even with lower quality audio input but to get the best out of them you'll need a high quality audio input too now i mentioned earlier the um perhaps hopefully a habit that i no longer have of falling asleep wearing headset but just say i was in the bath and i was wearing headset and I fell asleep. There's a risk of it getting wet, or I could just be walking around in the rain. Uh, are headsets waterproof? Some are. This is a premium feature generally. Okay. Um, but you can get 
different levels of water resistance. So some are focused on workouts and sports. So they'll have water resistance or sweat resistance, which is not the same as waterproofing. It means they can be splashed a bit and they'll be fine, mm -hmm. but don't put them in water. And then there are more premium sets that will be waterproof. Generally speaking, though, there aren't many of these because the nature of headphones, like I was saying about the drivers, they're innately physical product. So it's hard to be able to isolate all the electronics properly. Um, so generally speaking, you'd be making compromises to get a fully waterproof set. So there are some that you can use for underwater swimming. If you're looking for swimming sets, normally they will be bone conduction headphones. Oh, okay. So instead of playing the noises out loud, what they do is they send vibrations. So they'll sit just above your cheekbone mm -hmm. and then send vibrations into your cheek, which then vibrates your eardrum and reproduces the sound. So they're slightly different. They're not headphones in the same sense as regular headphones, but you can find them and they are properly waterproof. I'm, I'm not, obviously, I'm not saying that I fall asleep in the bath with headphones on. I, I really <laughs> don't fall asleep in the bath with headphones on because I don't listen to head. I do listen to music in the bath, but I have it on my phone at the other side of the room and I'm too big to fall asleep in the bath and for anything to get wet. So yeah. just want to underline that I'm far too tall for that to happen. Uh, what about what about rain though? Is 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 there a risk from water damage from rain, or is that just? There is, um, but a lot of the true wireless headphones, for example, have some level of water resistance. So even if it's just like splash proof, it will give you enough time to. If it's just lightly spitting with rain, they'll probably be fine. Mm -hmm. If it's pouring with rain, they give you enough protection to be able to take them out and pop them back into the charging case for a bit okay. uh, until you can get into a drier environment. I mean, it, like I said, it's very much dependent on the set that you choose because there's different levels of water resistance. And generally speaking, manufacturers charge more for the more premium level. So if you're looking for something that is much more water resistant, can cope with being immersed in water for a period of time or whatever it is, uh, you'll be paying for that as well. But if you buy a set that's focused on sports, generally speaking, these come with some level of water resistance or water protection. But the trade-off there is normally sports-focused ones will have a shorter battery life or they won't be as focused on audio quality. You know, that's why I said at the beginning that it's very important that you know why you're looking for a set of headphones as the most as the first thing before you start looking. Like, what do you want to use them for? Because that will be a huge determining factor in the type of headphones you end up choosing. Okay. And what about microphones? Is, is it wise to use a set with microphone built in or are, are they kind of like just an optional extra that's a bit, bit of just like for show or do they, do they really work? Yeah, they do. So what you might have in your mind is like the old early 2000s inline mics that were very useless. You know, the sound quality of them was terrible. They were hard to use. People couldn't really hear you. You ended up with this familiar sight of people sort of like dangling the cable from their mouth mm. just to get it a bit closer to where they're actually speaking so the other person can hear them. Fortunately, that's not really the case anymore. Most have very good microphones in them. And even ones with sort of like mid-range microphones are a huge step forward from that level of inline mic. The exception is normally wired sets, which rely on the similar inline mics that we've always had. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the microphone quality now is much better. Yeah. But generally speaking, the inline quality is not as good. Uh, because it's an analog one rather than digital um but you know on the whole people can use the microphones easily like i think both you and i are currently recording with a standalone microphone but i could just as easily do this podcast with just my headphones and mm -hmm. i think it would sound pretty much fine um but, you know since we have mics available we're using them yeah. but i think you know for the most part I mean, I don't know how many Zoom calls and things you've sat in over the lockdowns, but you'll nearly always see people with AirPods in doing the doing the calls with AirPods. And they sound fine. Mm -hmm. You know, it might not be the best audio quality, like professional, but it's absolutely acceptable and oh. certainly not something that you won't be able to hear. Okay. Yeah, I um, just, just so you all know, the answer to that question is I've done zero Zoom calls. I've had a few calls on other platforms. I don't think I've done any Zoom calls. Yeah, I've done a handful. Uh, a lot of, like, presentations and things I've sat on have been Zoom calls. But, uh, yeah, like, we're recording this using Skype, aren't we? Yeah. I'm, and I'm having to think now. I'm pretty sure I haven't used, I'm used, I've used Google Hangouts or whatever the current thing of that is or, or some other 
thing. I'm pretty sure I haven't used Zoom. My wife used Zoom a lot. Uh, I haven't had to use Zoom. I have managed to uh, avoid most meetings <laughs> during 2020. Hey, it's not fortunate. Uh, okay. Some upsides. Some upsides, yeah. So, um, hopefully, we've presented you with everything you need to know about buying uh, audio headsets, um, in ear headsets, true wireless headsets, wired headsets, Bluetooth headsets um, for listening, for doing Zoom meetings, for playing, for accompanying video games, for listening to music, and, co cover and demonstrating that they're available at all budgets with varying features. Uh, big thanks to James Free for uh, joining us. This is the really useful podcast, the tech podcast for technophobes. We're available pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts. We are on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, we're on Spotify, where anywhere you can find podcasts, we will be there waiting to give you the information and help that you need to make better use of your technology. We'll be back next week. Until next time, it's goodbye from us. Thank you.